Hi right, everyone, well, Farmer Luke here. I thought I'd do a short video today on the back end of a tractor. So I've done a few videos on implements that we pull behind the tractor and why we pull them and how they work, but I've never actually shown you how they connect to the tractor. So I thought today I'd just do this short video and hopefully we can all work out and understand how it works. So it looks very complicated here. There's a lot of stuff going on, but I'll go through it and talk you through it and hopefully we'll understand how it works. So, we'll start from the top and we'll work our way down to the bottom. So, we'll start up here with these two pipes here. Now, what these are, are where pipes connect from a trailer for the air brakes. So, what happens is a pipe goes in there and on here, and then air is forced through the pipe when we put our foot on the brake to slow the trailer down. When we're going on the road or in the field or turning, depends on when we want to brake. We move along a little bit further here to this socket. Now what this socket is, is for a plug that we plug in to work the lights. So if we've got an implement on the back, trailer, wherever it could be, and we can't see the lights on the back of the tractor, the indicator brake lights from lights, we have a plug there so we can put another set of lights on the back so we've seen along the road. Right, moving a little bit further down now, we'll look at these. Now these are what are known as spool valves. So what these are for is, if we flick them up, every implement we put on the back normally has a pipe, and the pipe goes in here, these two, or them two, and what that they do is they force oil through the pipe to work a ram. Now, I've got a little bit of an example of ram actually on the tractor. This ram's to help lift implements up, but it's the same thing as what's on other implements. So it's a cylinder that goes inside a cylinder. So when we push the button in the cab, oil is forced out the pipe into the bottom of the cylinder and that pushes this bit up. So whether we're tipping a trailer or turning a plow over, it'll, a ram will work either going up, down, sideways, depends where the ram is on the implement to make it do what we want it to do. So we'll move a little bit further down to these. Now these are called lift arms, and nearly all the implements that I have, um, what we call mounted, that we can lift up, connect to these. These are called a three point hitch, because it has three points of contact. So you have the two arms, and the top link. So, when we go to connect any implement that goes on the three point linkage, we have to use these. Now these are called, we just call them balls. And what these do is they slip into these little hook bits, if you like, and a pin goes through to hold, to connect it to the implement, and these little catches come down so it can't come out. Now what having these balls do is it helps the implement move slightly, so when we lift up, it comes up level, or when we're working it in the ground, it stays level. And it helps with the top link as well. That'll come down and hook. Again, there'll be a ball there that hooks on. I will do a short demonstration of how we're going to connect a plough up so you can see how this all connects to the implement. So how's the plough attach? Well, we explained the lift arms and they lift up with the ball, as you can see in the back there. And you can see the pin. It's held on by another pin to make sure that pin doesn't slide out. There. And then there's a little catch to make sure when we lift it up, there's no way that it can come off. Now, see so it's a three point linkage, so we've got one, two, we need a third attachment point, which is the top link, which works in a similar way to the bottom of the lift arms. Attaches here, just wind that back. The, lip, the uh, top link is adjustable, so when we're hooking implements on, we can get them on or to make sure that the plows or whatever implement it is, is running level because it pitches itself because these turn so you can pitch it to whatever angle you want it. And we keep talking about spool valves. So this is the pipes that work the ram to turn it over. They plug in the back of the truck here. Do that one. One, two. So when I push the button in the cab, 
the oil will run down the pipe. The bottom one, or top one, pushing the oil through, forcing the cylinder out, turning the plough over, or in this case, drawing it in, we'll fold it in this way, vice versa. So that is a very another whistle stop how to put a plough on. So I've talked a lot about oil we use in the tractor, whether it be in lifting trailers up, turning ploughs over. We also need oil to work these two big rams that actually lift up the implements on the end of the lift arms. So down here, we have a sight gauge so we can check how much oil is in the tractor. And if there's not enough oil, then we can top it up here. It's very important to keep the tractor topped up with oil, not just to work these rams and the pipes, but also the, the oils used inside the tractor's transmission system that keeps all the parts moving correctly and make sure they're very well lubricated and don't dry out and then break and cost Farmer Luke a lot of money. So we'll move on a little bit further down to the PTO. That stands for power takeoff. Now, what this is is a shaft that rotates round that drives any moving parts on implements. So whether that be a power harrow to smash clods up or a potato harvester, the web to lift the potatoes or whatever it be, it connects there. I have a little shaft as well that I'm going to show you how it connects. So this is a shaft off of a fertilizer spreader. This is nicely guarded. It's very important to guard it because that goes round at nearly a thousand revolutions a minute. So that turns a thousand times a minute. So if you're not careful, get near it that's not guarded you might end up in it and going around so we make sure that everything's got guards on and we still stay well away from the PTI and the shaft when it's going around and we're using it so how it connects is it just you can see this little bit cut out here but when we slide it on I have to push this back and then when that's connected on that flings forward and a pin connects in here so it doesn't come off and on it's very secure so I'll just show you quickly how it goes on. You can see that's very secure now, so when that goes around really, really, really fast, it doesn't come off and cause a lot of damage. I'll just take that off for now. And the last bit of the trap is right down the bottom here, which is the hook. Now, this hook is used to connect grain trailers up or any other trailing implement that has a big hook to that comes down and the hook just sits in there. You can see it's drawn back so the hook can't come out when we go on the road or pulling it fast. That was a bit heart racing to make sure I hit it first time. <laughs> so we keep on about hydraulic pipes. This is a hydraulic pipe. Now these are standard, no matter what implement they're on or whatever brand it is, they all look like this and they all act the same way. And you can see at the top there, there's a little nib. Well, that's to stop the oil coming back out again when it's not in use. So I can turn it upside down, put it to the side, swing it about and there's no oil come out. Now, this attached to the tractor, as we found out earlier in these spool valves. So they just push in, that's now locked. So when I push the button in the cab, which is featured on another Farm Loop video, if you'll have a look for it, it's called uh, Inside a John Deere Cab. The oil's forced out the tractor, down this pipe, that goes all the way under the trailer. So I don't know if anyone can see in the back there, but there's a big hydraulic ram. So when the oil's pushed through the pipe, it pushes up the inside cylinder of the ram that lifts the trailer. Then when I push the button in the cab to let the trailer down, the oil then comes back out of the cylinder, down the pipe, and goes back into the tractor to be used again at another point. Now, the ram is a very big ram because this trailer, when it's not got anything in it, it's on its own, weighs as much as an African elephant, about five and a half tonnes. This trailer is a 12 ton trailer, so I can hold 12 tons of weight inside of it, 
which are two African elephants. So when the trailer is fully loaded and in use, it weighs the same as about three African elephants. So that's why we need good brakes. And as I've discussed before, this is air brakes. So the air brakes just attach quite simply. They're very similar, as you see, to an oil, oil pipe, but there's no nib because air doesn't spill everywhere. And if it does, it's not gonna harm you. So that just quite simply attaches there. Make sure it's in, because there's a lot of pressure running through that. So if that wasn't connected properly, that would shoot out. He also has another, another pipe that goes on the other side. That fits quite neatly on there. You can see how much pressure is running through it. It's quite, uh, that's it, got it. I'm attached there. Now I said about the other thing we've attached is the lights. So here's the light plug for that. Again, it's very similar to if you tow a trailer, your mum and dad tows a, tows a trailer or a caravan on the car, it's the same socket. And that just attaches in there, like so, to work the lights, to make sure I'm seen in the dark. So that is how we attach a trailer to the tractor. So that is the back end of a tractor. That's a whistle stop tour. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Any questions or any comments you've got, feel free to do at the bottom, message me, I will try to get back to you. Uh, look out for more Farmer Loot vids. Thank you so much, we'll see you all again.